So, with the cost of living, uh, darker evenings, current political climate all giving us extreme anxiety this autumn, the news is pretty depressing. Dr Julie Smith is back with some top tips to help you cope. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, in the UK, over 8 million people are experiencing anxiety disorder at any one time. Sure, and, and we often talk about sort of anxiety disorders, but also there's lots of people that struggle with sort of reasonably sort of high levels of anxiety, depending on what's going on in their lives yeah. as well. And, and so I find that lots of people who might not even meet the criteria for a disorder find real benefit from learning a few skills about how to just bring anxiety down. Yes, because yeah. accessing treatment, as we know, is n nearly impossible. So it's yeah. better to have some tools for yourself. Um, just think, so you've got what you're brilliant at is using things to demonstrate so we can clearly understand. And yeah. you have a way of explaining anxiety, don't you? Sure. So I think a really useful way of, of understanding what anxiety really is, is an idea of the smoke alarm. So we all have this one threat response that's about survival. And our, our brain will pick up on signals inside our body so it'll pick up on your heart rate, your blood pressure, your breathing um, to sense whether things are okay or not, but also sort of outside of you. But it only has those signals to go on. So it's a bit like a smoke alarm in that if, it, if your brain detects any kind of sign that things might not quite be okay, it's just there to fire off and let you know. Um, and I think we've got a sound effect, haven't we? <laughs> So that's enough to trigger yeah. anxiety, isn't it? <laughs> so, if you're, you know, your, your threat response will, will fire off to let you know, actually, we've sensed something is not quite right here. But your job then is to work out what that cause was. Because a fire alarm can go off when there's a fire, but it can also go off when someone's burning the toast. Yeah. Um, oh, it's very burnt on this side. There we go. <laughs> um, so the idea is, you know, a real fire might be, you know, you're in the road and you hear a car horn way too close and you have that rush of adrenaline that gets you to the curb quicker than you thought you could move. Whereas someone burning the toast might be, do you know what, I had a few too many coffees this morning and now my heart's pounding and I'm feeling a bit tense and I'm not sure where that feeling has come from. Mm. So, you know, sometimes the feeling can be generated out of things that are about basic self-care um, or being overstressed and those sorts of things. And sometimes it's about a, a very mm -hmm. immediate threat. So what is it about now that's making us so anxious? I think uh, at this time of year, genuinely lots of people can really struggle and feel so almost dread for the winter months. Mm. So people are less able to get out and socialise. When you're more isolated, we all, we all know the, the, what happens when we're isolated now, don't we? We've sort of been through that. So uh, winter can cause lots of sort of loneliness for people. Uh, lots of people suffer with um, sort of effects with mood over the season, so see, seasonal affective disorder and those sorts of things. So I think there's a general kind of anxiety sometimes about the winter, but also with everything going on that you've been talking about this morning, if you're genuinely worried about not being able to pay your bills or losing your home over the winter, then that's enough to trigger off uh, reasonable anxiety, I would say. So, you know, we live and wait and hope to see what happens there. I hope this government come in and make some changes. But in the meantime, if you're feeling anxious for, and it could be many, many reasons, maybe it is, you know, you've had too many coffees and you need to sort yourself out. There are certain things that you can do. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, we talk about sort of uh, lots of little things you can do in the moment. Mm -hmm. and um, But there are also things you can do perhaps at the beginning and the end of the day to help promote that sort of uh, relaxed state. Often when we're really anxious or if we're very stressed throughout the day, we'll carry lots of muscle tension. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you can walk around. Some people walk around like this all day and they don't even realise their shoulders are up here. And then they get neck ache or headaches and those kind of things because you're holding all that tension in. And there's a really useful tool called progressive muscle relaxation so um, we can do this together if you like so you we, we would do it with sort of different muscle groups throughout the body but if we just demonstrate with our arms so if I get you to hold your hands out and then just clench your fists as tight as you can and I want you to try and tense all your arm muscles at the same time and then we're going to lift our shoulders up as high as you can just really tensing all of that area and we're going to hold that and when you're holding it I want you to then tense it a little bit more and we're really going to hold that. And when you're ready, I'm going to ask you to breathe out and release all that tension at the same time. So we're going to let the muscles drop, the hands, the shoulders drop, the hands drop at the same time. You ready? Three, two, one. And breathe out and let it all drop. Okay, so that's 
a super quick whistle stop tour of, of that process. And, and as I say, normally we'll start at the feet and we'll work all the way up through the body doing different muscle groups at different times and we'll hold it for quite a long how, time. How long do you tense them for? So if you're working all <clears> the way up? Yeah, so often it can be 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever feel you feel you can manage. Um, and, and that really allows you to sort of release the tension because often, like I say, you can be holding all that tension. You don't even realise it's you're there. Doing it. it really helps to release some of that. You breathe that out at the end and breath work's really important too. Uh, yeah, so uh, some of the breathing techniques are really very fast acting. So if you're, you're holding lots of anxiety and you really want to kind of slow that pounding heart, then you can uh, do really simple breathing techniques. So you can do a sort of a, a big breath in and then take one slightly smaller breath. So you're going and then doing a long out breath. So make the out breath longer than the in breath. And what you're doing there is when you do that little extra breath, you're opening up the little sacs in your lungs. And so when you do that long out breath, you're better, you're more efficiently getting rid of the carbon dioxide. Because when we build up that carbon dioxide in our body, it, we are stressed, so, so we feel more stressed and more anxious than we were. Mm, that's very good. So that's a re and I mean, again, they're very sort of quick um, demonstrations of those. Yeah. Um, but I've been working with uh, the Calm app to create a, a stress and anxiety series. And in that, I, I talk you through um, in sort of I've got 10 different episodes, but both of those are included, actually, where I talk you through a long exercise so that you can do it on demand. You know, you can sit back, close your eyes, and I'll talk you through mm. so that you can really learn the skill. That's out next Wednesday, isn't it? Next week, that's yeah. out, yeah. Um, what about ice? So ice is, is one that I often get asked about, and it was, it's, it's used in a, a therapy called DBT in mental health services. Um, and, and often it's for people who are feeling overwhelmed with emotion, and it's really hard to sort of bring yourself back to the present. And particularly with anxiety, your mind is often in the future, anticipating something bad that's going to happen. But with ice, it's so... Uh, extreme, an extreme temperature change, so it demands your attention. So it helps to bring you back to the present quite quickly. Yeah. So you can hold on to it, or you can rub it on sort of sensitive areas like your wrists or even your forehead to help bring you straight back to the present and focus on the here and now. Because when you're in the future, thinking of something bad that's going to yeah. happen, that's going to build your anxiety. What about cold uh, showers? Uh, yeah, do you know, I, I, Joe Wicks has been trying to get me to have cold showers for a while and, and do the sort of the cold dips and things like that. And the research is still building up. I think there's still more research to be done, but it's definitely building in popularity. Cold water swimming, cold showers, all these sort of cold dips. Lots of parents will recognise these on the tables. Kids have been squidging these for ages, yeah. sort of fidget toys. Things. Yeah, and again, it's the same sort of concept, is the grounding. So often when you're struggling, your mind will be elsewhere. And, and the aim is to bring you back to the present moment. And, uh, you know, objects can really help you to do that. So that might be a fidget toy, and, and kids really love those. But it also might be something simple like a, a pebble. We often would give people sort of pebbles. You can put, put it in the fridge, and then when you go out, you can pop it in your pocket. Right. And you, you can really feel that sensation, a bit like the ice, where it just helps you to draw your attention to something that's in the here and now. Yeah, um, such Simple things, aren't they? Yeah. But can really help. Yeah. I love it though. I've not seen one of these. Before. Have you not? They're quite satisfying. Yeah, satisfying. Them, yeah. They? <laughs> yeah. They love all these things. Um, to make sure they don't. Why have I got go a, what, a pen and, blue, and blue tack? Yeah. So I, I used mean, to do this at school. Is this are you paint drawing them? Uh, are you well, colouring it in? Uh, no, but, oh. but we we were thinking. <laughs> we That's could. what I used to do at school. Could. I used to sit there. I used to paint it. See how dark I could get it. I go. My hands were blue. <laughs> <laughs> and they're really sort of focused on the present. Yeah. It's a really good skill. Yeah, I mean, these are just... It's an idea of kind of thinking about everyday objects. So you don't have to go and source something expensive or have access to ice. You have to use anything that you can in the here and now yeah. to, to focus on the present. Distract so if you, you need to yeah. hold the table yeah. to, to come, you know, bring yourself into the present, then you can do that That's too. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Amazing. You've enjoyed Thank that? You. that